me saying it down i think one thing that i've learned in my entire stoa journey is me see everything that you get so that's the first step i also did as soon as i got the charter problem i knew what i want to work on but i had a major roadblock when it came to how to go ahead with putting it down i decided to work on legal aid market The Stoa Charter is a long-term meritless signal that only a limited amount of people who go through the Stoa program are able to clear. Today we have Janvi Gagar who's one of those successful people to get the Stoa Charter and she is here to tell us everything that went through her process of clearing it. So Janvi, before we get on to the chat, help us introduce yourself to our audience. Hey folks, I'm Janvi Gagar. I did my triple majors in media and communication English and psychology from Christ Bangalore. post that currently i'm in a community manager's role and i joined stoa as a part of their cohort 8 to learn the basics of business fundamentals and eventually have a venture of my own so janvi what was the first opinion of yours when you got to know about the charter exam and also when was it it was right before we joined the program which was in august and my first impression was that this is going to be like 10th boards 12th boards college all combined and extremely stressful so as the program started and your learning sprints were going on was charter a looming thing in your head or what was that like only for the first few weeks because post that um, every week there was so much happening and a lot of new things for me because i don't come from a business background so after a few weeks i forgot that there is something called charter which i need to you know work for but then yeah towards the end of the program by like the fifth month it was back there and when the charter was announced and you were given your projects to choose from what was the emotion at that point like it's like um you realize that your exam is right here and you probably aren't the most prepared for it so there was a lot of nervousness and the projects were very new mm. so it took me a like i had to mentally prepare myself that oh charter is here so now you got to buckle up had you ever done something like that before in your college or in your school where it was this applicative not really so um except for when i was in my college doing a media program that was like application oriented but not something where you have to understand a problem break it down find a solution which project did you choose and why um i chose the urban company project um because a uh, marketplace as a model really interests me and uh, the project kind of demanded you to you know work on from a business operations point of view from a new category orientation a new product so there were different things which i was little little interested in so together urban company seemed like the most apt project you only said collectively all of these things were new to you was it also scary to kind of do something like that Yeah, except for the fact that I knew what a marketplace means, I wasn't sure of what to do. And Urban Company as a brand, I use quite often, but I had never thought of it as a business. So that was interesting. So the charter got rolled out. You took Urban Company as a project, and the first couple of weeks have also gone by in just like you know taking stock of things. Ki okay, this is all what I have to do. So what was your process like then? Like how did you approach the charter in the first place? So the first three days were clueless. then i realized that notion is a tool which i absolutely love using so i actually put the entire whatever information we had of urban company on notion and i beautified it in a way that oh now it looks appealing for me to get started and the first thing i did was just made a timeline because that was also what was required as a submission from us to you know keep keep us in check of our progress so the first thing i did was made a timeline ki okay i have these many weeks and these are the number of classes left which are the weekends i can dedicate to this so that was the first step oh so you kind of made like a gan chart for your own self that yeah. you kind of said okay first week i'll do this next milestone is this and that's how you kind of approach i color coded it so that it is interesting <laughs> <laughs> nice that's that's helpful and in this process since you also had your learning weekends running was it difficult to find time the first three two weeks yes but after that our c8 program ended so that was actually a little bit of a relief because then i could dedicate my weekends to charter so i kept that momentum going that saturday sunday from 10 to 12 now that i don't have classes i will sit on charter oh so you dedicatedly sat for that stipulated time yeah. and you allocated it like a discipline only then because i got in a habit of you know opening my laptop at 10 every saturday sunday so i might as well use it for work 
what were the app like i think absolute number of things you had to do were eight and nine or something of that sort right deliverable so what was the first thing how did you approach that like where would you begin when you have to do so much me saying it down i think one thing that i've learned in my entire stoa journey is me see everything that you get so that's the first step we, i also did as soon as i got the charter problem first i me see down my process of achieving the charter and then i me see down the problem so that gave me an understanding that there are so many different ways i can approach it now let's narrow it down further so on your approach part if we like discuss on that more the first thing what was that like did you do any research did you actively started writing the presentation what was that like how did you prioritize that um i started by researching secondary research i started looking up what is a marketplace what are the opportunities in a marketplace white collar freelance market in india so just getting an understanding ki I only knew that there is a lot of creative professionals who are into the market but as in when I was reading I spoke to a few people and then I got an understanding that there are multiple domains into the white collar market so then I started thinking of each one of them and not just what I knew hmm so in your secondary research you would have to kind of also find the people who can give you insights right so how did that happen like did you like did you know them did you like connect with them through some referral engine how did that happen So when I narrowed down my niche then I knew that I have two three people in my network that I can reach out to and then they can help me further reach out to a lot of people. So there are a lot of people in the store community who were in the domain that I was looking for. So they were my first point of contact because I wanted to understand what the industry is. And at this point you have not thought about the solutioning aspect of it. You're just like collating information on what the problem and what the category is. So I wasn't very convinced with my you know the solution i had in mind so i was like i'll weigh in all pros and cons for the good 60% of my time for charter so yeah i hadn't thought of a solution till then but very actively just asking questions and figuring out okay what are people thinking and discussing in this industry yeah because i had limited knowledge initially so my plan was to get as much of information before i start putting myself into working for a solution and did the community or any sort of you know like people and fellows who were taking alongside you come to any aid was that sort of a help there or was that like or was it competitive because people otherwise are also taking it right so it was a mix a lot of people who actually understood what needs to be done and had like an upper edge they were very competitive but there were a lot of people who do not come from a business background and you know something like solving a case end to end was very new to them so they were mostly helpful when it came to ranting when it came to you know mentioning that i don't know where to start i would being vulnerable and be like oh you're not the only person there you know but we all can do it together so that was always like how we would end our conversations then. so with the research done and also like you know your fellows and all kind of in the same pool with you now comes the active solutioning part right so what was your look out there like how did you start with that piece out so i knew what i want to work on but i had a major roadblock when it came to how to go ahead with putting it down so i actually spent a lot of time thinking and that kind of you know delayed my process a little but uh, post that i spoke to someone from urban company mm. while doing my research and they gave me an idea as to you know how they approach what they are currently doing okay and if you like can help us understand what your solution was and what the problem statement was so you were to launch a new category for urban company right and what did you end up deciding there so i decided to work on legal aid market okay. because i believe that even we as professionals we need legal service when it comes to maybe understanding our employee contract understanding our rental agreements because people migrate to cities like bangalore and mumbai delhi quite often but because you don't come from a legal background you don't have an understanding and usually you get conned or mm -hmm. you are just in a boat where you don't know what to do and you end up paying a lot and once this is done now comes the active okay now i have to put things on paper right now i actually have to like you know write a solution make it into a deck so what was that process like was it overwhelming to begin with how did you kind of work around that it was very overwhelming because i had like a lot of content and i had only like 12 slides to put my content and also in a way that it's not like an article you are reading but you know pointers that someone just sees and understands mm -hmm. so i think um we had a couple of presentation workshops during those two weeks that helped me understand how i can maybe f make a flow for my content mm -hmm. it made a lot of sense when the workshops were going on but when i actually sat to do it i was again very scattered then i got a tip from uh, a colleague of mine that you know you should probably have build a storyline first 
and then start putting in content based on the storyline you have so that is what i went ahead with mm. and given the fact that the charter submission is also to be you know presented to a live jury and i'm sure that would also have like come with its own sort of like intimidation what was that feeling like when you got to know that the next one the jury is going to be evaluating it it was a cold feet situation <laughs> because as soon as we got to know that you know you'll have jury members who are industry folks and we had a few examples that these kind of professionals would be coming i was blank because i had never presented you know such an extensive project to a to a cxo level person so that was very scary so i went back to all those youtube videos of how to present you should start with why and all of these but i think what helped was just doing it and at any point did you also like you know do any sort of a dry run or a rehearsal of your like narration like was that also something yeah i i actually believe that because i did a did two of mock and mock presentation that helped me prepare for it better because i knew where i'm breaking my flow i i knew the points where you know my story just didn't make sense so during the mock i kind of figured that out and i actually wrote like a mini script with pointers that if at all during the jury presentation i have to you know have like some notes with me i have that this much practice and rigor then you were probably super ready on the jury day right like the jury comes and you just hit play and you're like narrating your script through and through or was it anything different on the jury day um so i was apprehensive that how am i even going to introduce myself to get started because it was intimidating but when i actually started my jury session the jury were very relaxed the jury members were asking me about oh hi how are you what do you do so that kind of broke that uh, initial barrier ki oh my god they are going to be very strict and grill me and even when i was presenting one thing i made sure that i stick to the time because i thought that that you know if i stretch that then that would leave a bad impression so that actually helped me because it gave me a lot of time to explain my solution and answer all those questions and even when they were asking the questions they were very direct but at the same time very kind about it when they had to give me a feedback and tell me that you hadn't thought of this but you should so they gave me ideas that you know probably think of it in this way and then what would you change in your approach so it was like collaboratively we were actually identifying the problems in my solution so but at any point did you feel that the qna was also grilling or kind of pushing you on things that you had not done in your submission yes so um like so i kind of stuck to the eight or nine pointers that we had to but when i thought about it it made sense that from eight to nine if you have to reach there are a few things that you need to do midway to justify your solution which i kind of had missed at some places though i had the data i did not have a reasoning to back that hmm. so when they asked me questions related to that i was like oops i do not know this but they actually gave me the time they were like take 60 seconds think about it because you know your solution you would probably you know have an answer Janvi, in this entirety of the process, what sort of a delta change have you seen in yourself as a professional? Like, you know, from someone who, of course, didn't know about the subject matter only to begin with, to actually apply it on a large scale project that in front of a live jury. How have you changed in these six months? How has Charter helped you in that? One thing with the entire one month or two month process of the Charter, I realized while was I started thinking of second order effects. This is something I consider as my biggest achievement throughout this two-hour journey because I, I I used to be a person who would stick to the solution they have thought, but because we were trained in a way, you know, think of the second order effects. If you are doing this, what will happen? Will it be sustainable? So now, even when I'm doing smaller projects, that is a thought I have, and I think that has really helped me build my. whether it is an event or build you know a small project in my workplace a lot better nice and let's say tomorrow you have to you know mentor someone for who is to taking the charter what would your advice to them be like don't keep things for the last minute <laughs> fair enough i think once you divide and you keep seeing progress every 4 to 5 days you start building confidence for your solution and i think that was very important because once you understand your solution you are able to back it up whether with data or you know anecdotal feedback like that's good thank you so much janvi for sharing your thoughts with us and super super congratulations on clearing the charter thank It's you so much same